If you've ever read much of Brandon Sanderson's works, you've probably picked up a very prominent theme that appears in almost every one of his books. Almost without fail, each one of his stories features a prominent religion within the narrative, at least within the Cosmia. Given his devout Mormon upbringing, this is probably not very surprising, but what does pique my interest, however, is that none of these religions feel contrived or forced. You can tell that every religion in one of his stories was given proper thought and attention when he crafted them. He made sure that they made sense within the logic of the world and that they were more than just a surface level thing for the characters to believe in. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In this short video, I'd like to go over how Sanderson uses religion in his fantasy stories, how easy it is to do religion wrong in your stories, and why it's important to get religion right in your own fiction. Before we get to his methods or the pitfalls, let's briefly look at why religion is such an important part of world building when it comes to fantasy stories. After all, you can't really build a proper religion if you don't know how important it is or why you should care, right? Religion is, understandably, incredibly important in the eyes of millions of people. As a non-religious person myself, I do still respect people who hold so strongly to their beliefs, even when challenged or dismissed. It takes a certain level of character to stand up for your beliefs in the modern day, so I definitely respect the resilience. That said, I realize it's a bit disingenuous of an atheist to try and explain why religion is important, but I believe I can do so without making a total fool of myself. From my perspective, religion is one of the core themes within the human condition. It's a set of beliefs based on faith that developed all over the world in isolation and complete independence. We clearly have a need in our psyche to believe in something greater than ourselves. Some of us follow a philosophy or set of principles that fulfill that role, whilst most go for the full gamut that is a religious faith. Knowing that this belief is so ingrained in the human psyche, I can now understand why many people believe as fervently as they do. Some feel it gives them solace during difficult times. Some see it as a set of guiding morals by which they can live their lives. Others find that it holds answers to questions nothing else has been able to answer in a satisfactory way. The reasons why are as varied as they are individuals, but to say that religion is important to people is an absolute understatement. Now imagine the strength of this belief, the power of this conviction, and then consider another innate aspect of human psychology, tribalism. Humans are inherently tribalistic. We seek people like us in some way, form an in-group and hold our line against the out-group. Whether it's for something as inconsequential as our favorite Pokemon or punk rock band, or for something as important as our family or religion, humans will naturally seek others to form a tribe with. Now, when people read about characters in a work of fiction, we obviously know that these characters don't exist. We know that these are made-up stories with no real-world significance. But our emotions don't know that. Our emotions simply feel. So even when you know a character doesn't exist and never really did anything in the real world, you still get completely emotional when a character you hate appears or a character you love dies. We read about these characters and we start to care about them because our emotions don't make a distinction between an actual person or a fake person. Now, consider the implication of tribalism we just discussed. In a fantasy world, you can't expect your reader to immediately care about a character. It takes time with a character for your reader to really like or dislike one of them. And one of the best ways to help that process along is to tap into that tribal instinct. Unfortunately, fantasy stories are very removed from reality, so it's difficult to create a bond between a reader and a character when there's little they can actually, well, bond over. Something that's great for this, however, is to help your reader care by adding a strong religion to your story. The odds are that this will not only ground your character more in reality and make them seem more real, but it will also create the potential for tribalistic attachment with the religious readers. This isn't the only or most important reason to include religion in your fiction, but it does play a massive role and its importance can't be understated. And even if a reader isn't religious, most people still have experienced holding strong beliefs or following a set of rules in life to help them be a better person. So even if your reader isn't religious, there's still that thing in common that'll help ground your character in reality. Okay great, so I can just put a religion in and call it a day? Just take something like Catholicism, replace the names and references with fantasy terms and we're good to go, right? Of course not. There is a lot to consider when it comes to creating a religion for your story. Fortunately, Sanderson does a lot right, so you definitely benefit from studying what he does. 
First, though, we need to know what not to do, or we may risk falling into some nasty problems before we even get anywhere productive. The first and most glaringly obvious mistake you can make, as just mentioned, is taking an earth religion wholesale and just replacing labels. Now, don't get me wrong, earth religions are great for realism, because they are, well, real. But not only do you risk offending some of your readers, but your religion will also be greatly out of place if you set it in a fantasy world, because the religion isn't from that world. Religions grow and change based on the events within a geographic area over time. Plopping an earth religion into, say, Roshar from the Stormlight Archive just wouldn't make sense. The religion needs to make sense in the context of the world you're creating. The next mistake you could make is one I see far too often with amateur or beginner writers. The religion feels too shallow. Either the characters in the world barely believe in it, the beliefs themselves feel made up and not realistic, the structures and institutions around the religions feel shallow, etc. There are many ways to make a religion feel shallow, and this comes from either doing a half ass job at building a proper religion for your story, not exemplifying how a follower of that religion would act within the narrative, or just having the religion there for the purposes of window dressing. It's just there to look nice and make the fantasy world seem real, but any reading deeper than a few pages would reveal that the religion was used more as a set piece than an actual integral part of the world. But, let's say you manage to make an original religion for the world and you even built it properly so it doesn't feel shallow. Is that enough? Definitely not. Because even if you make a great religion, it doesn't mean diddly squat if it has no actual bearing on the overall story. Who cares if you've built an amazing religion when it doesn't affect your characters in any way, doesn't inform their decisions in some way, doesn't affect their interactions with others, or doesn't somehow affect the relations between people, clans, or nation states. Remember that religion once shaped the geopolitical reality of the world on earth. It had actual consequences to the lives of people and nations. Your religion feels completely pointless if it doesn't actually have some interaction with the world it inhabits. Before we wrap up the segment, I'd just like to cover one last mistake you can make when building a religion. And that mistake is to make religions overly complex or convoluted. I'm not saying you can't have some complicated parts of the religion, but remember that the religion needs to be believed by the common person as well. Perhaps the clergy can spend time thinking on the deeper meaning behind some contradictions or some complicated ritual, but the average person can't. They need something simple and powerful that they can latch onto in order to get them through the day. So while I'm not saying you should avoid complexity, I do think it's important to remember that a religion should also have simplicity in order to balance the scales. But I could go on and on about potential mistakes you can make with religions in your fiction. For now, let's look at how you can do religion properly. Let's look at how Brandon Sanderson does some of his religions. Brandon Sanderson is a masterclass in how to do religion properly. Simply by studying some of his Cosmere works, you'll begin to see how a writer can write religions properly for their story. Take Elantris, for example. Here we have two religions that both stem from the same root. Shu Derith and Shu Korath both come from the same original belief system, Shu Keseg. This is reminiscent of Abrahamic religions in the real world, where Judaism split to form Christianity and Islam. When building a religion, remember to look at where it came from, and if there are any sister beliefs that share a common root. It'll help ground your religion in a more realistic basis. Next, we'll look at Warbreaker. Specifically, I want to look at the pantheon gods of Helandrin, because it's quite unique in that the gods were all once normal people. In fact, they still are normal people, except they now have some special abilities and can essentially give their lives to heal anyone from any injury or ailment. People believe in them because they represent hope beyond hope. They represent the ability to come back from the brink of death, and they do so by being self-sacrificial. When building a religion, consider what it is that the common people get out of it. What value does it add to the lives of the people who believe in it? Another great example to look at would be Mistborn. Now, I will throw up a spoiler warning here because one of the religions I want to mention is based on a major event within the first book. So I'd say skip ahead if you haven't finished book 1 of Mistborn yet. Okay, so, in Mistborn you have two religions that can be compared and contrasted with one another. On one hand, you have Sliverism, or rather the belief that the Lord Ruler is essentially God. He wields absolute power and holds dominion over the lives of all people. He has entire religious institutions set up to perpetuate belief in him. 
he literally made the world in its current form and genetically altered the people who lived within it. On the other hand, you have survivorism, or rather the belief in Kelsier as a kind of messiah figure who died in order to save the people. His core tenet is to survive, and coming from a person who survived the most brutal prison camp in the empire, that's saying something. It's doubly important because it's a message that resonates heavily with the people who lived under the dictatorship of an immortal tyrant for a thousand years. When constructing your religion, consider why it is that people believe in it. Some people crave structure and a strong authority figure. Others want salvation and the belief in someone who would die for them. The structure of your religion and how it's presented is a major part in why people would believe. And finally, I'd like to consider Roshar's religion, specifically Voronism. Voronism believes in a single god called the Almighty. Below the Almighty, on an almost demigod level, are the ten heralds who once guided humans in their wars against the Voidbringers. The heralds once genuinely helped guide and protect humanity and the Almighty is an actual shard of Adenalsium. Of all the religions, this one could be considered the most legitimate on a Cosmere level. But what's more important is the legacy of this religion. The heralds guided humanity and helped them learn and rebuild in order to face the toughest challenge of all. Then, after the last desolation, the heralds left and humanity was left to grow and flourish on its own. Yet, even in their absence, the people are still being guided. Voronism teaches its adherents to work diligently in their calling in order to be rewarded in the afterlife by being able to help the heralds in one last glorious fight. The religion heavily relies on guidance and greater ambitions. When building your religion, consider how your religion helps guide its followers. How does its teachings help people make decisions and help them achieve their own goals? And above that, how does it make them feel like their struggle in life is in service of something greater, something beyond them? I could make a whole 10 part series on the topic of writing religions alone, but I think this video acts well as a short primer on the topic. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it at least gave you some things to think about when crafting religions in your own fictional worlds. Thank you very much for watching, I sincerely appreciate all your time and attention. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like since that's one of the biggest metrics that YouTube looks at when recommending it. And if you'd like to see more, please hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified of future videos. Take care and we'll talk again very soon.